program you are about to hear is largely fiction, science fiction. We make no guarantees, however, how long it will remain fiction. Exploring tomorrow. And now, here is your guide to these adventures of the mind, John Campbell, Jr. The problem of dealing with robots is a rather peculiar thing. You know, when you deal with another human being, you can say, well, uh, you know what I mean. And he can say, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. When you're dealing with a robot, though, you have a different situation. If you say, you know what I mean, the robot says, the, no, tell me. The trouble with the robot is that it will always do exactly what you tell it, whether it makes sense or not. It has no judgment whatever. For instance, a, an automobile is a robot. You tell it to drive straight ahead, it drives straight ahead, right into the concrete bridge abutment. It doesn't have any sense. Uh, another thing, if we say home is the hunter, to a man this makes sense. Uh, we think of the poem as a quotation. What would such a phrase mean to a robot? A report from James Martin, Special Agent to the Director of the United Nations Intelligence Service, February 19, 1993. Dear Chief, I hope you had a happy St. Valentine's Day. I wish I could say the same for myself. The way it looks now, the only Valentine I'll get will be one with my epitaph on it. I hope this report reaches you eventually. You may never get it, or if you do, I may be dead by then. Maybe it was a good idea to take this section of Europe and reform the country of Transylvania again, but right now I'm inclined to doubt it. Since Transylvania became a new country, there have been queer things going on here. As for your instructions, I got an appointment to see Baron Decklitz, the Prime Minister. When the appointment came through, I was met at the front door of my hotel by Colonel Bronlick, the head of the Transylvanian Secret Police. Ah, Mr. Martin. I was instructed to escort you to Castle Decklitz. You have an appointment with the Baron, I believe. Yes, that's right. And you are... I am Colonel Bronlick at your service, Mr. Martin. Come. This is our limousine here at the curb. Well, this is uh, very kind of you, Colonel. Kind? Not at all. It is my duty. You are an agent of the United Nations. It is therefore my duty to escort you about. Especially when you are going to call on our Prime Minister, Baron Decklitz. I see. I, uh... I suppose we'll have to wait for your chauffeur. Oh, not at all, Mr. Martin. This is a robot-operated automobile. Observe. I merely press this button. Yes, Colonel Ron Lake. Drive us to the Castle Decklets. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Martin, do we not have all the modern conveniences here in Transylvania? Oh, yes, yes, very modern. You'll have telephones next. We have uh, robot-operated machines in my country, too, Colonel, but I must admit that none of them are capable of talking as this one does. You find that unusual? Well, yes, yes. A robot brain capable of conversation would be too large to fit in this automobile. <laughs> the brain is not in this car, Mr. Martin. This vehicle is guided by remote control. The actual brain of the robot is in an underground chamber beneath the castle decklets. Oh? yes. The Baron's castle may look on the outside as though it were a thousand years old, but the equipment within is quite modern. Well, I uh, have to admit that it's pretty convenient to have robot-operated remote-controlled transportation. All of the Baron's transportation works this way. His cars, his aircraft, his boats, everything. Hmm. Sounds as though Baron Decklitz runs the whole country by remote control. With a robot like that around, it's a wonder he needs any human helpers. Mr. Martin... I will thank you not to criticize the government of Transylvania. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend. After all, I am supposed to be a diplomat. You might try harder, Mr. Martin. Why is the car slowing down, Colonel? Do you see the portcullis? That heavy steel grate that closes the entrance? That, too, is controlled by the robot brain. The Baron certainly seems to be well guarded. Very well guarded, indeed, Mr. Martin. It is difficult for anyone to get into Castle Decklitz. It is even more difficult to 
to get out. Exploring Tomorrow continues in just a moment. All of us as American citizens believe in our inherent liberties and freedoms such as the freedom for educational, social, and economic opportunity. Our American system of education is the fertile soil which feeds the roots of democracy. By teaching us to think for ourselves, it has given us a deeper understanding of life around us and the ability to regulate our thoughts and opinions. But we must always be alert to the fact that with this freedom comes a responsibility the responsibility of using our opportunities to their best advantage so that we benefit from them not only as individuals, but as a united nation. Accept that responsibility and ensure your freedom. United Nations agent Jim Martin had managed to get an appointment to see Baron Decklitz, prime minister of the newly formed country of Transylvania. But now that he had gotten inside the Baron's castle, he was beginning to see what was wrong with the new country. Because the castle itself was nothing more nor less than a huge robot. He had managed to get inside a robot. That castle was a real nightmare. There were hidden television cameras everywhere, and they all relayed everything they saw to that big brain in the cellar. No matter where a man might go in that castle, he was never out of the sight of those robotic eyes. Colonel Bronlick escorted me into a big, comfortable, ultra-modern room, told me to help myself to the sherry, and left me to wait for Baron Decklitz. I went over to the bar. But there were no glasses there, no bottle of sherry. I thought that maybe the colonel was having a little joke, when suddenly a voice came from a wall speaker. What would you like to drink, sir? Oh, uh, a glass of sherry. Yes, sir. panel slid open in the wall and a glass of sherry came out. Good evening, Mr. Martin. No, no, no. Don't bother to rise. Sit down. Now, how may I help you? Good evening, Your Excellency. May I present my identification? No, stop. Before you put your hand in your pocket, Mr. Martin, let me warn you not to try to draw a gun. I assure you that if you tried it, you would be detected by my robot and you would be shot down where you stand long before you could aim your own gun. A robot can think and act much faster than a human being can, Mr. Martin. Well, I didn't come here to kill you, Baron. I'm not an assassin. I'm I'm here on United Nations business. Yes, I am aware of that. I merely wanted to warn you. And now, please, your identification. Yes, here it is, sir. Thank you. Yes, that seems to be in order. Now, what business does the United Nations have with the Prime Minister of Transylvania? Well, I'll be frank with you, Baron. There's something wrong here in Transylvania. The UN doesn't interfere with the internal government of its members unless the government is violating the basic rights of its citizens. Well, frankly, sir, Transylvania is doing just that. You impudent young swine! Transylvania is a scientifically run country. It is run by... Mathematically logical principles. All decisions of the government are analyzed carefully by robotic computers. Well, yes, but... You think I make the policy for the country? No. All policy decisions are made by the robots. So that they can be scientifically accurate. What happened? The lights went out. The power has been cut off. Someone... Oh, Oh. Martin, you shot me. You got off the power so my robot could not operate. Baron. I will get you, Martin. When the lights came on again a second or two later, the Baron was sprawled on the floor. I looked around the room, but I couldn't see anyone. I hadn't shot the Baron. I didn't even carry a gun. Whoever had killed him made a clean getaway so far. I knew I had to get out of there, too. Just before the power went off, I'd been arguing with the Baron. 
When the robot came to, it would shoot me down with the hidden automatic guns in the wall. I had to get out of the castle deck. When I got outside, I saw that the steel gate in the side wall of the castle was open. Nearby was the car that had brought us in. The keys were in the ignition. I got inside, fast. I gunned the car toward the gate. Just as I came near, the gate began to close. And just as I went through the gate, it slammed shut. I breathed easier after that. At least I managed to get out of the castle decklets. But I'd forgotten one thing. When the car started to slow up, I pushed down harder on the accelerator. But it didn't help. Hey. Hey, what's going on? The car's turning around. I can't control it. It's taking me back to the castle. machine, no matter how complex and intelligent it may appear, is still a machine. The trouble with the machine is that once it's set to do a particular job, it doesn't do any good to argue with it. The only way to stop it is to shut it off or wreck it. Jim Martin was in no position to do either. It was kind of like being in an automatic elevator with the controls stuck. It was going where it was going and there wasn't anything you could do about it. I knew I'd have to get out of that car. It wasn't going very fast yet, so I decided to jump before it got up too much speed. I rolled across the road. It shook me up a little to jump out of a moving car, but I wasn't hurt. I got up, brushed off the dirt, and started down the road toward the city. I was about five miles away through the thick forest and about six miles by road. I decided to follow the road. I didn't want to get lost. I'd been walking about ten minutes when I heard a noise was a helicopter coming from the direction of the castle. I got off the road fast and hid under a tree. It was dark, and even with the moon shining, it would have been hard for a human being to spot me from the air. But the television eyes of that helicopter were sharper than human eyes. The robot saw me. You must come back to the castle, sir. Not me, Buster. The helicopter will land. You will get the moon lit up the helicopter pretty well. I could see the snouts of the mounted machine guns pointing at me, but I didn't care. I figured that going back to the castle would be certain death anyway. I jumped behind the tree and then dived under a nearby bush and started crawling. Where are you? You must come back. I just lay flat and kept quiet. And then I heard another sound on the road. There was a car coming. Robot! This is Colonel Bronlick. I noticed the helicopter hovering, so I came immediately. Is the murderer Martin nearby? Yes. He is somewhere in the woods to your right. Excellent. I have a squad of men here. We will capture him. Yes. He must go back to the castle. All right, men. Spread out. Cover the whole area. He must be somewhere close by. Turn on the searchlight. I knew they'd spot me soon. There was a spotlight moving near me. I decided that my only chance was to run for it. If I stayed where I was, I'd die. Here goes. There he is! Stop him! Put him down! It was the craziest gun battle I'd ever seen. Before the soldiers could shoot me, the helicopter's weapons had gunned them down. And while it was doing that, Colonel Bronlick had climbed back into his armored car and shot down the helicopter with the turret gun. By the time the whole thing was over, I was well hidden in the underbrush. Pretty soon I heard the armored car drive away. But I just stayed where I was. It didn't make sense. Why had the robot's helicopter shot down the soldiers? Whose side was the robot on, anyway? I decided that since everything was quiet now, I'd better get moving. I wanted to get to the city by dawn. So I crawled out from my hiding place and headed for the road again. I didn't get far. Put up your hands, Mr. Martin. What? Colonel Bronlick. I, uh... I didn't see you behind that tree. I, I thought you'd driven off in the armored car. Oh, no. As soon as I shot down the helicopter, the robot brain took control of the car. I jumped out. I uh, suppose you're going to shoot me like you shot the Baron? Hmm. Of course. The robot is convinced that you killed the Baron. And so will the people of Transylvania be convinced. And I will proclaim myself the new prime minister. No wonder this country's in trouble. 
The Baron was a crackpot, and so are you. What? Well, looks like the robot has another helicopter to operate. Good. The robot can kill you and save me the trouble. Well, I don't think so. Have you figured out why the other helicopter shot down your men instead of shooting down me? An accident. The robot could not see well in the dark. Perhaps I should not have shot it down, but it was obviously faulty. Now, you're not thinking straight tonight, Colonel. You must get in the helicopter, Mr. Martin. You must go back to the castle. Oh, well, I'm afraid I can't do that. If I move, the Colonel will shoot me. That cannot be permitted. Well, thanks, thanks, Robert, old boy. That's the end of the man who shot the Baron. That does not concern me. My orders are to bring you back alive. Get in the helicopter, please. Anything you say, pal. Let's go. The helicopter took me back to the castle decklets. When it landed in the courtyard, the robot had more orders for me. Go into the main hall. The Baron wants you. I walked back to the room where the Baron had been shot. My hunch had been right. The Baron, stubborn old cuss, had refused to believe that he was dying. He wanted to teach me a lesson. So he'd given the robot orders to bring me back alive. Alive. So that meant that if anyone threatened my life, the robot would have to stop them. And it used its automatic machine guns to do it. It didn't matter to the robot that the Baron was dead. As long as the Baron's hand was on that control button, the robot had to obey its orders. It had hunted me down and brought me back. I walked over to the control panel and talked into the microphone. Robert, you will obey my orders now. Yes, sir. Very well. As soon as I leave here, you will cease operation. You will turn yourself off. You will never operate again. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. Now, I'm going to go out and take one of the Baron's cars. He won't need it. Well, that about winds up the report, Chief. I hope I'll be able to deliver it to you. I'm in my hotel room right now, but there's rioting in the streets outside. Transylvania has been turned upside down. Nobody knows who killed their Prime Minister, Baron Decklitz, nor do they know who machine-gunned Colonel Bromley. But the worst trouble is with the robot. You see, the Baron had the idea he could run the whole country with the robot. It was supposed to be a scientific form of government. That robot ran almost everything in the whole area. It controlled the power plants, the telephones, transportation, even the garbage disposal. And ever since it shut itself off, nothing has worked in the whole country. As a result, Transylvania has no government and no organization. The idea of running a government by machine was a failure. The trouble with a lot of very logical and honest people is that they think that logic is both necessary and sufficient, when it's really only necessary. The idea of a machine government was a failure. It always will be. Now, the trouble with the Baron was that he forgot one basic thing. It's sane for men to run machines, but it's insane for a machine to run men. Machines can handle truth and do a perfect job of it. But they cannot handle judgment. They have not. Heard in our cast tonight were Larry Haynes and Don Douglas. Script was by Randall Garrett. Produced and directed by Sanford Marshall here in New York. Bill Maher speaking. Mm-hmm.